the strangest dream I'd ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room filled with women and men and the paper. Signing said they'd never fight again. And when the paper was all signed and a million copies made. They all joined hands and bowed their heads And grateful prayers were prayed And the people in the streets below Were dancing round and round While swords and guns and uniforms were scattered Last night I had the strangest dream, last night I had the strangest dream I'd ever dreamed, I'd ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world, I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed the world, I dreamed the world had all agreed. Can you believe that Ed uh, Curdy wrote that in 1950? But it could have been written this week. So we got to start singing it again. Can you hear me okay? okay. Uh, here's another song that someone wrote uh, in the 1970s. It's called Heaven Help Us All. And you can help me when I sing it. Heaven help a child who never had a home. Heaven help the girl who walks these streets alone. Heaven help the roses if the bombs begin to fall. Heaven help us all. Heaven help the boy who won't reach 21. Heaven help the man who gave that boy a gun. Heaven help the victims and the victors till they fall. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us, Lord, hear our call. When we call, heaven help us all. Heaven help the poor man as he struggles one more day. Heaven help the rich ones if they turn their backs away. Heaven help the people with their backs against the wall. Heaven help us all. Help us. Heaven help us all. Heaven help us all. Help.
pasar Now I lay me down Before I go to sleep In this troubled world I pray the Lord to keep Hatred from the mighty And the mighty from the small Heaven help us all Heaven help us Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Beautiful music and, and very timely and appropriate. Hi, I'm Stan Shikuma. I'm uh, one of the co-presidents of the Seattle chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League, one of the hosting groups tonight. Our, my other co-president, Kyle Kinoshita, is sitting in the middle there. Um, and our other partner in this program is the Washington Physicians for Social Responsibility. Um, JACL is one of the oldest and largest civil rights organizations in the Asian American community. WPSR is one of the largest and oldest peace groups fighting against nuclear war, trying to end nuclear uh, use of nuclear weapons and nuclear power. Um, we are happy to have you all here. We want to thank the Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Washington, uh, where we are holding this program. They don't de generously donated the space to do this. Um, yeah. And, and their executive director made the Matsutake Gohan that's in the hall. So, so uh, there are refreshments. There's water and tea and cookies, and I think there's still some Matsutake Gohan left. Uh, if, if you want, uh, this is, you know, a home home informal program. So you know, feel free to get up. The bathrooms are down the hall. Women's to the left, men's to the right. Um, and with that, I think we'll get into the program. So I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Hiroshima <laughs> A flower grows in Hiroshima. Known by very few. Its color changes at a certain time. As if the flowers knew. Spring till early August. It remains solid. Then its edges appear to be burned. As if the flowers knew. So precisely. But it's true. Every August 6th at 8.15, the blossom changes hue as if the flowers do. I think flowers remember. And there's something else they do. They pass that memory on again. If only we were to. 
8月6日8時15分。At 8:15, August 6th, 1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1945年、1 Flower grows in Hiroshima. Known by very few. Its color changes at a certain time. As if the flowers knew. My name is Roger Ed Mark, and I'm here with the group from World Friendship Center. My wife and I were the directors of World Friendship Center for about two and a half years from、uh, 2019 through 2020. And so we're going to just tell you a little bit about the World Friendship Center in case some of you don't know what all they do at the World Friendship Center in, in Hiroshima. So、um, we have four speakers today that are. Have come. They're part of what we call the PAX team or Peace Ambassador Exchange. And they are Mariko Sunawaki, So Horie, Tamiyuka Okahara, and, and Yuko Osawa. And, and they will be speaking in just a little bit.、Uh, we, just to tell you a little bit about the World Friendship Center, you see there's lots of things going on at the World Friendship Center.、Uh, if you read all those as, as they're up there,、um, we have peace camps. We have, in the past, we have a guest house, peace concerts, university interns, peace studies, English classes, and so on. Uh, it was started in 1965 by Barbara Reynolds, and she, in, in、um, wanting to do something that was affirming, wanted to make sure that Hibakusha had a place where they could tell their stories and that they were supported by an organization. So they started the World Friendship Center and have been、um, going since 1965. This is uh, the uh, special memorial that was put in the Peace Park. One of only two Americans to have memorials in the Peace Park.、Um, peace exchange trips, and that's what they're doing here now between US and Japan.、Uh, we've had them between Japan and US, Korea, and, and, and even other countries in the past. So we have, as mentioned, the first hand. A bomb accounts for the guests.、Um, if any guest wants to have a, a,、um, a Hibakusha come and tell them、uh, their story, then we arrange that. And, and so,、uh, anytime you come to World Friendship Center,、um, you can hear stories from Hibakusha. Also, part of the、uh, program there is to provide、uh, tours of the Peace Park. Uh, Schmo Museum, A bomb trees, and other things that are in the area that people find、uh, interesting and have lots of stories about them.、Uh, Mariko is one of the guides for the Peace Park. As, as one of the directors there,、um, one of the things that we were involved with was English conversation classes. My, wa- my wife 
did a lot of studying of Japanese, so she'd speak Japanese a lot there. But then we got there, and everyone wanted to speak English with us. So um, that was uh, part of the responsibility. And the guides and, the, and some of the hibakusha and all come to these classes to make sure they have an opportunity to speak English so that they can tell people from around the world a story in English. Some, sometimes there's Japanese guests, and they, they obviously can say it in Japanese, but mostly English is the language that we, we use for the French, the Germans, and everyone else around the world um, that wants to come. Uh, another thing that is done there is these pass-on lectures where they try to bring information about uh, Hiroshima, about um, A-bomb survivors, and all kinds of different things, and have special lectures. Uh, many of them are, are mostly attended by Japanese uh, people in, in Hiroshima, but other people that are in the area can attend them as well. Okay, so I uh, really appreciate the opportunity for um, us to share today, and the PAX team is, is looking forward to giving their presentations of what they have studied and want to share with you. So to begin with, uh, So Horye will give his Hibakusha talk. Konbawa. Thank you very much for coming here today and giving me the opportunity to speak to you. My name is So Horye. So Horye. Uh, Avon Sai Baba. I am chairman of plaintiff group uh, which want to stop Ikata nuclear power plant. Ikata nuclear power plant is uh, only one, 100 kilometers from away from Hiroshima City. There are many volcanoes and earthquakes occur very often in Japan. Fukushima is not under control yet. There are many problems still unsolved. I hope my testimony will give you an opportunity to speak down about Avon and radiation. Uh, this book is a collection of essay I wrote when I was uh, in uh, fifth grade of elementary school. Uh, this is katakana letter, letter P kado. Mm. At that time, most of the Japanese people uh, do not know uh, what kind of bomb. So we call Pika or Picadon at that time. Uh, next slide, please. Why we had to stop war and conflict? Uh, I have already uh, my own answer about this uh, question. Uh, please teach me your opinion about this, uh, this, uh, this question. Uh, this photo is Avon Dome, August 6th in the evening. Not only Japanese, but people from all over the world come to Peace Park and um, praying for uh, peace around the world every year. Uh, this map is old Hiroshima City's map. Red place is completely destroyed. Yellow place is not completely. I was at uh, Black Stars uh, Point, uh, away from uh, three kilometers. Next up here. Uh, this is a uh, center part of Hiroshima City. Today, Peace Park, but uh, before dropping Avon, uh, this is a uh, uh, downtown of Hiroshima City. There are not uh, military industry uh, at that time. Next up. Do you remember what happened when you were five years old? When I was that age, I was close to the Avon, uh, uh, three kilometers from Hypercenter. My elder sister, who was 15 years old, and I were walking on the around in the neighborhood. 
My sister was suffering from very early uh, shortage of vitamin B1 and absent from student mobilization, we were walking along the hillside road when all of a sudden very bright flash next come of an overfilling blast of window with big sun. We are almost blown away. Promptly, my sister covered me with her body and we uh, lay face down on the road. There are a shrine of Tenrikyo, one sect of Shintoism, uh, which is Japanese traditional religion in our neighborhood. Uh, as the house near the shrine was on fire, the object of worship in the shrine was uh, carried to my house. A preacher prayed for wounded people. Tasuke tamae kiyome tamae tenri kyo no mikoto. He prayed, 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 but he, he, he was unable. Uh, one woman passed away in my house, and the other person uh, could come back to their home, but they could not live a long time. Oh, uh, I remember uh, two persons. One was a, a junior high school student. He was burned all over face and proud skin, uh, peeled skin uh, noise. And my mother picked it. Uh, it was very painful. And uh, the other person was a young girl. A pattern of her dress uh, printed on her arm. As our house was filled with evacuated people, I was praying in the field by the house. Then suddenly rain began to the fall in the window. It was, as we learned later, the black rain with radioactive particles. I hurried home. Among the laundry hung out to dry was my father's underwear. It was stained black. My mother uh, and I uh, uh, discussed uh, 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 don't, uh, don't donate it, uh, the underwear to the Peace Memorial Museum. Okay. The door in our house was cremated in the playing ground of the elementary school in which I enrolled my, uh, myself later. Uh, what I remember is only the revolting smell I had endured all day long about one month. Imagine what the smell was like if lots of decaying corpses were burned with not enough fuel in the playground on a hot summer day. The playground was only 100 meters away from our house. Uh, this is an article about my brother-in-law. Uh, he was uh, a city about uh, 10 kilometers from Hiroshima City. Uh, he, 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 he was uh, working at student mobilization. Uh, his boss uh, asked to see him, uh, come back to your home, uh, because uh, Hiroshima City is very terrible. And she come back to uh, Hiroshima City uh, with boat, railway is not uh, moved, and walk to the terrible center part of Hiroshima City, and uh, uh, come back to uh, uh, he, uh, his, his house, and he um, worked uh, this place, he worked this place, and he had cut all of stomach, all of stomach. Center part of little boy is me. It is very different now. <laughs> Uh, my, uh, my father was a Navy officer. Uh, he was control of the military industry. Uh, his office is very near uh, from Hyper Center. Uh, he could uh, play judo. And uh, at that time, he stayed at the second floor. And um, fire blew from uh, first floor. And he could run away from second floor. But uh, another person, uh, uh, did not run away. It was very terrible. Uh, he spoke to my mother uh, many, many, many times uh, when my parents 
uh, stay in the hot spell. Uh, several times uh, after uh, he passed away, two, two soldiers carried a white box. Uh, when soldiers saluted and left, my mother uh, broke down to the uh, white box. But I could not understand what had happened uh, to my father. ABCC, Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, uh, end of World War II, USA and uh, USSR, today Russia, uh, fight against uh, Japan. But uh, uh, end of world, near the end of World War II, uh, USA uh, know uh, next enemy will be USSR. And if USSR use nuclear weapon, uh, what will happen? So USSR uh, examined, exposed Japanese like guinea pig, um, took blood sample, uh, but uh, did not any uh, treatment. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, this is a uh, article. Uh, uh, my elder sister, whose disease very, very saved her life due to uh, her, her absence from student mobilization, felt guilty, felt guilty because only she survived Avon among all her friends. About 7,200 uh, 7, students were killed with uh, Avon. She took part in 10 feet movement, a uh, movement to rise found to buy back an American color movie film that record Hiroshima after the air bomb. Each person donated 3,000 yen for 10 feet of film. She developed a disorder in a large institute in her 50s. She passed away at the age of 55 after struggling with colon cancer that spread all over her body. Because in those days, morphine was not given to cancer patients as often as they. It is very painful for us to see her end of uh, her life. I want to ask a question for the man who took the film. Uh, several years ago, American uh, journalist uh, uh, told me um, a person uh, passed away with no leukemia. A person uh, not only Hiroshima, but also uh, Nagasaki. Uh, this is an article about my, my, uh, my mother. Uh, my mother was very sad uh, because uh, his daughter uh, worked uh, to peace very hard, but uh, my, uh, her, her daughter uh, passed away with very, very terrible, terrible disease. So uh, my mother uh, went to uh, Jakuan in Kyoto City. Uh, this person is a uh, very famous nun and writer. Uh, she received my mother's story. My mother wrote 820 sutras by hand for her daughter and for world peace. Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, um, my brother's essay about Avon. I think my, ma uh, my brother wrote this essay uh, when she br uh, brought uh, human body to elementary school. The school was a living hell and more cruel than the field hostel. Next slide, please. As for me, at the end of 2011, I had an acute stomach pain and was admitted to uh, Hiroshima Red Cross Hospital. I was diagnosed with a lymphatic malignancy. Lymphatic malignancy, axe lymphatic, uh, which is one of blood cancer. It's possible to sp uh, spread for all over body. There is not complete recovery. <coughs> 
uh, Christmas day. And so my wife brings such kind of uh, uh, costume. <laughs> Uh, this photo was taken with positron emission tomography. Positron emission tomography can diagnose cancer, uh, which absorbs so many grape sugar with injection of radioactive uh, grape sugar. Next slide, please. After treatment, uh, uh, what's the uh, orange part? Mm. Chemotherapy is very effective, uh, not only cancer, uh, but also uh, hair. Uh, I lost my hair <laughs> completely, but today, like this. Uh, this is a uh, history of my, uh, my, my, my family. Uh, father, six day later, acute sickness. Uh, mother, uh, uh, 20 years after uh, breast cancer. Uh, elder sister, uh, 40 years after colon cancer. Brother, uh, 45 years liver cancer. As for me, uh, so lymphatic gland and lymphatic malignancy. And uh, my doctor said uh, to me, uh, you will be in someday. And brother-in-law, uh, 64 years after stomach cancer. Uh, except my younger, younger sister, except my younger sister, all of my family uh, received big damage uh, with uh, Avon. Uh, this photo is uh, today's Hiroshima City. Uh, Hiroshima City is uh, completely uh, destroyed with Avon. But today, many, many people donated the many tree and uh, became very wonderful city. Please come to Hiroshima City and visit World French Center. Uh, American director, welcome to you. Please come to World French Center. And please teach me a uh, first uh, question. Uh, your opinion. I, I want to bring uh, your opinion uh, to my country. Hello everyone. I'm delighted to be here to speaking with you today. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Yuko Osawa. Osawa Yuko to yimasu. From Hiroshima, Japan. I was born in 1957, 12 years after the end of World War II. Growing up in Matsuyama, Ehime Prefecture, 62 miles, th miles south of Hiroshima, I hardly knew about the atomic bomb. I got married to a man from Hiroshima and moved there in 1983. I worked part-time at the Hiroshima Television Broadcasting as an assistant reporter. Later that year, I was assigned to interview a manga artist. His name was 
Keiji Nakazawa, known for his autographical work, Barefoot Gen, Hadashi no Gen, in Japanese. Nakazawa was a hibakusha, a survivor of the A-bomb, and Barefoot Gen was based on his experiences. He was born in Hiroshima in 1939. He was exposed at 0.8 miles from ground zero when he was six years old. His elder sister was crushed to death when the house collapsed. His father and younger brother were trapped in that collapsed house and burned alive. After his mother died, he was shocked that her bones were so damaged by radiation that they did not survive cremation. Moved by his anger, he decided to write about his experiences. He also said that the truth was much crueler than in his illustrations. His mother gave a birth to a baby girl on that fateful day due to the shock of the A-bomb, which induced her labor on the street near their house. Gen became the older brother of a baby girl named Tomoko, but Tomoko did not live long. She died from malnutrition after four and a half months. Gen's father always told him to be as strong as wheat. This is one of the main teachings of this manga. Nakazawa died from lung cancer in 2012, but his character barefoot again lives on. Let me speak about my family's life in the U.S. Seven years after the interview of Nakazawa -san, with Nakazawa-san, I moved to California for my husband's job. At that time, I was the mother of two children, ages four and two. We enjoyed our life in Irvine, California. We traveled to many places within those four years. Cities like New York and Washington, D.C., natural wonders like the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone, and attractions like Disneyland, Disney World, and Key West. We also visited the Manzanar Internment Camp in California and National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque. <clears throat> it was the summer of the 46th anniversary of the defeat that I was shocked to see the world great on an eerie black model of the atomic bomb at National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. On the way back to Japan, we stopped by Hawaii and visited Pearl Harbor. My husband and I have a specific memory of Pearl Harbor from the second winter we had in the U.S. It was on December 7, 1991 the 50th anniversary of Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. We were sitting on the sofa and watching a TV show that was focused on the Pearl Harbor attack. More than 10 veterans were at the studio talking about the attack and seeing the film of the war. At last, the A-bomb was dropped and the screen was filled with a big mushroom cloud. They were so excited and cried with joy. 
The audience clapped their hands and they looked so happy. But they had no idea of what had happened under the mushroom cloth. Another example, from closer to home, my son Takehiko was called by his American nickname, Tak. Gradually got used to American life and sometimes said, I'm an American, not Japanese. My husband worked for Mazda Motor Company and we stayed there for almost four years. One day in my son's American elementary school, when he was nine years old, they learned about the A-bomb. He had also read about the Sadako and the paper grains in his class. After coming back home, he said, Mom, the atomic bomb fell, be, fell because Japan did, sorry, Mom, the, the at, atomic bomb fell because Japan did bad things in Asia and other places. That's why America dropped the bomb. He was the only Japanese person in his class, and he couldn't say he was from Hiroshima. I was shocked to hear this from my own son, but it led me to think more about how we teach history. I think it is important to learn history from both outsider and insider perspectives and from an understanding of other people's views and the value of individual experiences. Returning to Barefoot Camp, there are many scenes of history from outside of the day of the bombing. It is important to realize that the book tells a story across many years and facing many different issues. For example, there are depictions of discrimination and corruption. There is a depiction of the Nanjing incident and it depicts his father's arrest and beating for protesting the war. It is a serious depiction. And this scene, which you can imagine, is controversial. Ever since it, it began being published, it has been read at all ages, not only in Japan, but also all over the world. Nakazawa was awarded the honorary citizenship of Dallas, Texas, in 1987. His book had been made into an animated movie, and he visited a theater in Dallas, where it was being screened. After seeing the movie, people gathered to honor Nakazawa. A middle-aged woman hugged him tightly with tears in her eyes and said to him, I didn't know what happened in Hiroshima. I'm so sorry. Nakazawa was strongly moved by her words. I think it is important to learn history from both outsider and insider perspectives and to form an understanding of other people's views and the value of individual experiences. We have seen here that Barefoot Again is a powerful story told by a Hibakusha and accessible to a wide audience. I believe it is an adult's responsibility to create opportunities to think about peace and an educational environment that allows children to think for themselves through various kinds of materials. 
That brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention, and please come visit Hiroshima. I'd be very happy to show you around. I hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us to this meeting. And uh, thank you for the present this book. I'll bring back to the Hiroshima WF Center. Thank you for uh, My name is Tamiyuki Okahara. Uh, Today, I would like to share about uh, the life, lives of my father and uh, I. Uh, thank you for coming, for listening. I was born in 1939 in my family home in Hakushima Chou town, Hakushima Chou, about 1.5 kilometer from the hypocenter. I lived with my father and mother and older brother. My father was worked as a national tax, Japan National Tax Office in Hiroshima branch. My mother was a, a, a stay-at-home mom. About a month before the Avon disaster in 1945, when I was six years old, I was evacuated with my mother and brother to my uh, uncle's house in Itaki village in Sayo town. Sayo town is more than 50 kilometers east of Hiroshima city. On the morning of August 6, I saw the mushroom cloud of the A-bomb while on the school ground of Itaki Elementary School. I didn't know what had happened, but uh, a teacher hastily came and uh, ordered to me get into the room. I suspected the teacher didn't know what had happened either. The next morning, August 7th, I went to school, but my mother came to the school to take me back to my uncle's house where we had evacuated. I didn't think <clears throat> anything was so serious until we arrived home and I saw my father. I was taken to the room where I saw my father for the first time after he was injured by a bomb. He was lying on a white futon, but I couldn't recognize him because of his bloody and broken face. My father lost one eye and one ear, and hundreds of broken glass pieces were stuck into his body. I will share his story with, with you later after my story. One to two weeks later, I visited the Hiroshima city with my mother and brother to see where our house used to be. The whole area had been destroyed by fire. I couldn't see any building and the only thing I remember seeing is 
water trickling down a water tap in the sultry burnt field. At the time, we did not know that by going into the city, we were exposed to internal radiation. About 20 days after coming back to the village, my father began showing the effect from Avon radiation. He had a high fever and began to bleed. Many purple spots appeared on his body and his white blood cell count dropped dramatically. For oh, the next four to five years, my father fought against this serious disease as he hovered between life and death. I remember often waking up in the middle of the night as my father's condition would suddenly change the whole worse. Eventually, my father went back to work at the National Tax Office in March 1947. Though he handicapped, he worked very hard to support and raise us. In 1948, three years after the A-bomb was dropped, our family returned to Ujina in Hiroshima City. In 1963, I was an adult working for Yokohama Lava Company in Tokyo. I received a call while living in Osaka that uh, father was being operated, operate, operated on for stomach and liver cancer. I rushed home, but Father passed away during the operation at 59 years old. Then, four years later, while living in Fukuoka, mother became seriously ill. I moved to Hiroshima to care for her, but she died one month later at the age of 57 years old. After 42 years away from Hiroshima, I returned with my wife to care, to care for her mother. She is also a Hibakusha and two sisters also Hibakusha. In 1999, when I retired, her mother and elder sister passed away in 2005 with many cancer. I will now share my father's story. Father did not talk much about the two days journey he took to get back home or his struggle to survive the devastation from the Avon. It was just too horrible for him to remember. He was only one of two survivors among his office workers and felt sorry he had not been able to rescue anyone. But after his death, my brother found a newspaper article from 1951 which his office requested he wrote for educating young employees. My father, Minoru Okahara, was born in 1903. He worked as a Japan National Tax Office in the Hiroshima branch, less than 800 meters from Hypo Center. In the article, he told of several lessons he learned which helped him escape and survive. Lesson one, 
don't argue with others about silly trifle. はい、耳が痛いですけど。<笑> I had a confrontation, あ、he had a confrontation with a co-worker on the morning of August 6th, though outraged by the co-worker's behavior, he listened to a divine voice within his heart. Warning him, no wait a minute. It is just morning. If you argue with others in this morning, you will feel bad all day and it will be hard to do your duty. Instead, he decided he did not want to start the day off with an argument. So he was at his desk, protected by a behind a large safe when the bro,、uh, bomb went off. A bomb's direct flash directly hit co worker's desk. So this is a very lucky for him. Lesson two. Don't panic when you face disaster. At first, my father's situation looked bleak. The purple lightning flash of the a b o n e knocked him down into darkness. He was buried under the collapsed building and had been hit on the back by a beam. He had a laceration on his head and blood dripping down his forehead. A hot wind hit him with a strong smell. He yelled at the top of his voice, but no one answered. He was convinced he was going to die, but thinking of his family, he knew. He needed to stay alive. He stayed calm and awake and struggled to escape. He covered his nose and mouth with his injured hands because of the toxic smell of the hot air. Cleansing his teeth, little by little, he was able to get his head. And the body clear of the debris. But it was still dark in the collapsed office, and he thought it, it would be impossible to get outside. Looking around, he saw a faint light about a meter away, and by making his body small, he crawled out of a hole in the roof of the Destroyed the building. He stood on his injured leg, held on to the wreckage of a wall, and closed his eyes until he, his heart calmed down. He struggled to stay awake and keep i n g moving away from the approaching fire. Lesson three. You should accept the advice of others. On escaping the building, he met the only one other survivor <coughs> in his office, Asano san. <coughs> Asano san said, The fire is coming quickly. There is nothing we can do to help the other people in the collapse, in the collapse building. You must get out of here or you will die. He apologized to Asano san that he could not help the others. He helped he or his survivor to Asano san's advice. <coughs> ごめんなさい。ちょっと I have a slight cold. I'm sorry. He、uh, headed the nose. Passing by charred bodies and victims with festering flesh and skin, skin wood. 
It was a miserable sight. He saw hundreds of injured, injured soldiers walking nothing north in the line of join, he joined them. At one point, he saw water gushing from a broken iron pipe. He was so thirsty, so he happily cupped his hand to drink water when a soldier yelled out, You idiot! Never drink water. If you drink now, you will die at once. He was so thirsty, but he decided there was a reason for the advice. And he persuaded himself not to drink and continued walking with the soldiers. He saw thousands of half-alive victims moving aimlessly. The city was a sea of fire. The sky was black. It <clears throat> was a scene from hell. He decided that the only way home was to swim across the river. When he just about to get in the river, again a kind soldier stopped him, telling him that soldiers that were victim of the bomb did not survive in the river. And if you drank the water, they died. Though he wanted to swim across the river and wonder if the advice was correct, he decided to take the advice from the others. He laid on the sandbar and waited to be rescued. Listen for carefully prepare for the anything that might happen. Suddenly, a black rain started to fall. <clears throat> he found a piece of tin to protect himself from it. Nobody was going to come to help him. He had to make a plan to help himself. First, he was really hungry. Luckily, he found a pumpkin in the river. And using a shoehorn in his pocket, spooked out soft part of and satisfied his hunger. <clears throat> After attempting to use a part of pumpkin as a pillow to get some sleep, he suddenly felt queasy and <clears throat> vomited out all, all the pumpkin he had eaten. The stench from the vomited pumpkin smelled just like the hot wind hours before. He learned later from a doctor that the liquid he was vomited was toxic radioactive materials, which had ingested uh, through breathing. He was glad he got it out of the body. He continued to munch on the rest of the pumpkin, which he found out later. is good for white blood cell count. He was thankful for God's grace. <clears throat> the next morning, as he listened to people searching for their relatives, he learned that Hiroshima was being annihilated by fire. Transportation was completely disrupted. He decided to, he had to get to his home village on foot. Hiroshima was a sultry hell. After walking two hours to Hiroshima station, he eventually got a truck ride from Enko Bridge to Kaitaichi Station by laying down in the street to stop the truck. After seeing a doctor, he took the first train to 
his home village. He got off a Saijo station where many people came to help him. He was home at last. Though father was back home, there was no doctor to treat him but Dr. K, a caring pharmacist, who treated his head wound daily. A doctor returning from Hiroshima diagnosed that his eye injury needed to attention right away. So he had surgery in Oromichi City. Twenty days later, the Avon disease overwhelming him. He had a high fever, bleeding purple spot, and no appetite. Doctor tried everything, but finally gave up. He went back to home to Saijo Town. Eventually, he entered the National Hospital in Saijo Town, which was conducting special research and the treatment for the A born illness. His white cell count was at 1,300. About 7,000 is normal. The doctor is said, it is a medical mystery that you are still alive. He wavered between life and death as he was treated. But after three months, he symptoms were relieved and he went home. Last final rest. Do your best in all situations. Father said, looking back on the three months recovery, I realized it was not a waste time, waste of time, but a fruitful time in my life. It ingested the sense of awakening and inspiration in me. He felt he had an obligation to repay the kindness of the elders, relatives, and friends, because his life was once at risk, but with their help, he survived. My father's stories are over. <clears throat> In 1999, I visited the Hiroshima Museum, ah, Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. After hearing my mother's in-law's testimony and reading my father's story, I was reminded of how horrible the disaster of a bomb had been. I felt so sorry. I was not concerned enough about the disaster caused by the A-bomb. I decided to start my story. Uh, I decided to start sharing my story and my father's story in 2006. Like my father, mother-in-law, and other Hibakusha, I have not been spared from cancer as well. Early in 2021, I was treated, operated for the prostate cancer and for a pancreatic tumor. I am currently doing well. I would like to close my sharing my final thought. I hope that leader in the world can visit the Peace Memorial Museum and listen to Hibakushan testimony to understand how terrible atomic bomb were. And I would like them to remember that Pop expressed, expressed so clearly when he visited Hiroshima in November 90, uh, 2019s. He said, the use of new school the use of nuclear weapon is a crime against humanity. I think, I believe, seeing, seeing is believing. 
Thank you for a long time. Now, uh, Monaco is going to give one last presentation about discrimination. So, Monaco, check in yours. My name is Mariko Sunawaki. Can you hear me? <laughs> My title is Hibakusha and Discrimination. I have heard that everything in life has meaning, and I agree. I was born in Shizuoka. It is a prefecture in the middle of Japan over 200 miles east of Hiroshima and is famous for Mount, Fu Mount Fuji. My family was nuclear one and we did not have much social contact with our neighbors. We are, we are a family that didn't care much about our reputation in the neighborhood. We really had guests. When I was 30 years old, I met my first husband, who was working in Shinga Prefecture, next to Kyoto. After we had been dating for a while, he told me that he was from Hiroshima and his father was an atomic bomb survivor. Before I got married, I visited, I visited his family in Hiroshima to greet them formally. His mother told me that her husband had been in Hiroshima city during the bombing, but he had been in Oita she had been in Oita and not exposed to the atomic bomb, so I didn't have to worry about that. I understood that she was trying to say that his family had been affected by the atomic bombing, but to a much lesser extent. My first husband's family seemed to feel a bit of shame because they had an A-bomb survivor in that family. Our engagement party started peacefully with his office section chief and wife, my parents, my first husband, and myself. During a conversation about Hiroshima, my father-in-law suddenly started telling us a story about what happened in the aftermath of the bombing. He said, I had a terrible time bleeding from the mouth. My first husband kept quiet at the time, but after the party, he expressed his fury at those comments. Another day, we are talking about the Abon Dome. My first husband said, why does the city of Hiroshima preserve such a dirty building? Later, I told him that I had learned on the news that he could get free medical checkups if he applied as a second-generation A-bomb survivor, he firmly refused, saying, I don't need that. He was in denial about everything related to the atomic bombing. Until his death, I hadn't heard about his life as a second-generation atomic bomb survivor or whether he faced discrimination. Let's look, at, look closer at the situation of the atomic bomb survivors after the bombing. As you have heard, 
Radiation is one thing that makes atomic bomb different from conventional weapons. Hibakusha have suffered not only physical scars such as kiroido, but also emotional scars that remind that of their a bomb experience often in their daily lives. Grief over the love of lo loss of loved ones and friends, guilt that they are they are the only survivors, and uh, soci social discrimination, social discrimi discrimination in terms of marriage employment, and more, radiation exposure can be broadly classified into acute damage, which has immediate symptom and large-term effects, which appear later in life. Some hibakusha are still alive more than 78 years later worrying not only about their own health, but also about the effects of radiation on their children and grandchildren. There are various types of discrimination. Mindless insults were th thrown at Hibakusha suffering from radiation exposure or those with keloid scars or who, who were told that they would be infected by the atomic bomb because they had been exposed to the bombings. For Hibakusha, who were unable to work due to fatigue and exhaustion, it was believed at the time that Hibakusha were physically weak and seen as unreliable due to the patterns of sudden unexpected deaths as the effects of radiation claimed their lives. There was also marriage discrimination for many. It was hard to find a family that would accept the hibakusha. One woman was investigated by her would-be husband's parents, who did a background check to find out whether she was a hibakusha. At the time, women were considered a part of the labor face force, and the family were greatly opposed to marrying someone who might suddenly not be able to work. Some hibakusha themselves feared that they might have children with disability or deformities, and some were forbidden from having children because of this. Some men were also told that no one would marry a hibakusha. Another hibakusha who had six daughters hit the fact that they themselves were able survivor because they thought the discrimination and the prejudice of having been exposed to the atomic bomb would uh, affect their children's marriage. It was not until much later that they applied for the health book for Hibakusha to cover their medical expenses. There was also discrimination in employment. Many times, if employers found out that applicants were Hibakusha, they were rejected and existing employees would face discrimination in the workplace. Korean 
Hibakshir had to deal with this type of discrimination on top of the ethnic discrimination face, facing many Koreans at that time. The widespread ethnic discrimination against the Koreans multiplied for those exposed to the atomic bombing. These two bombs not only ruined Hiroshima and Nagasaki in an instant, but also killed people indiscriminately, made the victims suffer lifelong after effects and exposed the survivors to discrimination and prejudice. Their suffering was multiplied. I hope that nuclear weapon will be eliminated. Continuing my story, when I was 43, my first husband died. I was a housewife at that time, and I had to think about how to provide for three children and decided to become a nurse. For five years, I was busy studying, doing housework, and raising my children while working. I didn't have time to think about peace. I was just trying to get on with my daily life. After graduating from nursing school, I worked at the psychiatry, psychiatric, psychiatric hospital for 15, 15 years. During that time, I remarried after my three children were grown. I decided to take up English conversation again after retiring. As I had been studying on and off from sixth grade until I got married, I also wanted to become a volunteer guide at the Peace Park so I enrolled in World, World Friendship Center, English Conversation and Guide Class. I started guiding foreign visitors in Pittsburgh. For the first time, I understood the horror of the atomic bomb, how innocent people instantly lost their lives, and how those who survived were still suffering from the after effects to continue to learn more about peace and war, I went to lect lectures held by WFC and studied on my own. I have been a tour guide for nearly eight years now and have given tours to people ranging from young children to people the same age at the second generation Hibakusha, many coming from around the world beyond just explaining the monuments in the Peace Park. I showed them photos from the time as well as art made by the survivors as they think about that, time, that day. I want to help them understand Hiroshima before the atomic bombing and then in the horrifying aftermath. Under the influence, influence of my husband who loved politics, I began to enjoy watching documentaries on politics and war. I also read about the people who worked hard after the bombing in the guide class. As my knowledge increased, I realized how innocent I had been about society. Barbara Reynolds the founder of WFC came to believe 
through the ups and down she experienced in her life that when people meet and talk face to face, friendships are formed and peace is created. We sometimes have personal conversation during the tour. Some guests join me for lunch at the nearby Okonomiyaki restaurant and others talk with me about various topics over a cup of tea at the Peace Museum Cafe, spending this short but pleasant time with each other is peaceful and meaningful through these encounters. I hope to pray a part in building peace in my own way. Thank you for listening. Before uh, Sean wraps up and you have an opportunity to ask questions, we're going. To, you have one more opportunity to sing with me. And this song is called One World, and I have some helpers. Also, you have the opportunity to either sing it in English or sing the chorus in Japanese. We'll all do it in, Jap in English first.
Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sean. I work for the Washington Physicians for Social Responsibility. We are one of the oldest anti-nuclear weapons groups in Washington State. Um, and I regret to inform you all that on Monday uh, there was a bipartisan report released calling for the expansion of our nuclear weapons arsenal. The National Defense Authorization Act, which is being negotiated right now, calls for funding new nuclear weapons systems. Um, and I want to ask you all to um, take a minute to, if you have a smartphone or if you can take a picture and, and do it later, um, go to this link here and write your member of Congress and tell them no more funding for nuclear weapons. What I want to just ask folks tonight is, you know, repeat a simple phrase after me. Never again. Now for that to, to really mean something, people are going to have to step up and take action. On September 26, which is the uh, United Nations International Day for the Abolition of Nuclear Weapons, um, people like, like Roger and like Mona in the audience here join demonstrations around Washington State demanding that our members of Congress oppose expanding our nuclear weapons arsenal. We're going to do that again, but we need more people to show up if we're going to stop a nuclear arms race. The nuclear freeze movement was really critical um, in the 1980s to getting us away from the brink of another nuclear war. But the nuclear freeze thawed, and now we're living in a world without arms control treaties, and we're living in a time of nuclear weapons escalation. Now, Hiroshima was not the last time that the United States government used nuclear weapons. They used them again in the Marshall Islands. Russia used them in Siberia. The United Kingdom used them in Australia as tests. But we need to make sure that it never happens again. So just on the, on the right here, I'm going to ask people to take a pledge with me that if our members of Congress in Washington State vote to fund more nuclear weapons, we're going to get out into the streets. We're going to get out in front of their offices, and we're going to tell them to stop. And we're going to keep doing that, and we're going to keep growing, and we're going to keep getting bigger until they listen. So you just go to that bit.ly slash no nuke pledge, sign up, and tell your friends, tell your family. We got to get rid of these weapons for good. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> we have some time for uh, comments or questions. If anyone in the audience has a question they want to ask or comment they want to give about what we've just heard. It's a really unusual and unique opportunity that we've had to actually hear from Hibakusha and the families of Hibakusha from Hiroshima. Um, very rare especially these days, um, that we get that opportunity. It's also a very important time, because as Sean was saying, we are in the process of possibly adding on to the nuclear arsenal, expanding it, quote unquote, modernizing it, meaning making it more effective. But I, I guess the big question is more effective to do what? And um, we have wars going on, hot wars, uh, in several places in the world, and uh, they involve countries that have nuclear weapons. So it is not inconceivable that we will see another nuclear explosion used on people, you know, specifically in a war, uh, in the next, you know, foreseeable future. So, you know, we've we've heard what that can mean. Um, so hopefully you do what Sean said and, and contact your members of Congress. Any questions? 
comments, reactions. How many people have been to Hiroshima? Oh, back there. Okay. Have you, have you all, did you all, when you went to Hiroshima, did you go to the Peace Museum, the Peace Park? Yeah. Um, okay. There's a question. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks so much. I'm really actually one program. Uh, so, thanks so much for having your questions for me. And I really appreciate that. And then also, it's a great thing you recognize in some Koreans as well. So, uh, I mean, uh, no problem. So if you didn't hear, he was saying that the Korean atomic bomb survivors will be coming to the United States to do a tour, starting in Seattle, November 13th, and they'll be here for three days. Do you know where where they will be speaking or appearing? Okay, thank you, thank you. So, uh, so we don't have the exact schedule yet, but he'll, Sean will get it and we'll publicize it. So if you put your email, so look for emails from WPSR. So uh, the TPNW is the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. There's over 90 countries now that have signed on to it um, and almost as many that have ratified it. That does not include the United States. So that's something else we can work on, is that uh, we've been in the process of withdrawing from any nuclear um, non-proliferation treaties, limits on nuclear weapons, uh, and prohibition, nuclear bans. Um, the United States has been dropping out rather than pursuing those things. So that's something else to mention to your members of Congress. Other comments? Questions? From sure. Okay. So thank you so much for all the presentation. Thank you. Um, uh, maybe a question to Yuko-san, and I'm talking about the uh, Hadashi no Gen, is that correct? Yeah, okay, so in my, um, I came from Japan, and in my elementary school days, we had a series of the manga at the uh, uh, classroom. And then also, uh, I, we have read in the manga uh, every Sunday on a newspaper, too. <laughs> so, but I'm just wondering how it's, uh, is the manga treated nowadays by schools and by maybe society? Yeah, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> you know, because in Hiroshima now, uh, you know, people over, uh, yeah, just started with manga. You know, manga is a kind of, you know, younger generation's things. So, have you ever heard about manga? Oh, really? Thank you. Have you ever heard about? Barefoot again? Oh, wow, how nice. You know, when we, I talked in, at school, uh, in schools here and asked, do you know manga? 
few people just, you know, yes. And when I asked about barefoot again, no one, no one doesn't know. So I was very <laughs> impressed. So many people knew that already. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, but in Japan, uh, now manga is very popular for younger people and uh, even adults love manga. <laughs> and uh, barefoot games, as I told you before, uh, it is yeah, kind of you know amazing manga. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. Just, you know, one reason I'd like to tell you. This year, Hiroshima City District, Educational District, am I right? Uh, decided to remove barefoot again as materials from school, you know. Just so people in Hiroshima talked and talked and had discussed discuss about that, but you know, city already has decided. But as a result, grandfather, grandparents, and the parents started to buy by themselves. We have to get. It's interesting, <laughs> but it's, um, so I think you know. As a materials, manga or bungaku, uh, literature. We have many atomic bomb literature here in Hiroshima. Do you know Haratamiki? <coughs> Toge Sanka, Toge Sankichi, Kurihara Sadako? Or, mm, let me see, uh, Otayoko? Uh, so, uh, Owa Kenzaburo, a oh, fa very famous one, has written Hiroshima Note. So if you have any chance, please read those kinds of literature and also be able to gain. Thank you. Thank you. So, any other questions from the audience? Sean. ちょっとよく最初のところよく分かんなかったけど、えっと、ま、結局今このグループをオーガナイズされてて、人々をこう、あの、あの、向こうからアメリカに連れてきたりとか、いろいろして交流を作ってるけれども、こう、ここから先ど
Israel or some kind of the liar, some kind of the leader is a lie, too many lies. China, North Korea, very worried about it. Now is the only stop the use of the nuclear weapon first. And uh, in the last May, Biden, President Biden visited to Hiroshima on the G7 summit. Can I read? Uh, he visited the museum, this museum, and uh, signed of the memories book message. Do you know, the, know how he said? No. Can I read here? Some people are, you know, leader. Now, there are seven summits of the seven countries leader. Each other writes the, his message in the memory. Biden, Joe Biden. May the stories of the, this museum remind us all of our obligation to build a future of peace. Together, let us continue to make progress towards the day when we can finally and forever rid of the world of nuclear weapon. Keep the health, faith, keep the health. This is a Mr. Biden, President Biden, so said. How do you think about this? <laughs> if you, Biden, change this collection, how do you, American, progress? No, no comment. <laughs> Please, yeah. and uh, now is the uh, uh, Japanese government is very serious condition because of the, under the U.S. nuclear umbrella. So, Mr. Kishida, my university is uh, junior, but he very, very, very tried to the changes of the uh, progress, but he's very, very difficult. Many, many contradiction. Nuclear weapon deterrence. Many, many contradiction each other. So, but we don't uh, give up, try to. Uh, citizens' power is very uh, important now. I think so. I believe so. So, our citizen movement is very difficult. But important. Gabari Bajo. Thank you. Carol. So, a comment. I was, had the privilege of accompanying our visitors to school classrooms over these last few weeks. And we've, they've spoken to over 500 kids around the Puget Sound area. And it was very powerful to listen to what the kids had to say. And this is, they wrote a, one, one group of middle school students wrote letters to them. And I'll just read one of what their comments was. I hope nothing like this ever happens again. I know a lot more about the atomic bomb and how important peace is after listening to your presentations. Mm -hmm. We had questions like, did this really happen? And why did they drop the bomb? Why was there war? Why, why was the war going on? And didn't Japan drop a bomb on Hiroshima first? Yeah. There was, I mean, uh, on, on, uh, on Pearl Harbor first, excuse me. 
and um, so it was some very powerful conversations. And so I went out looking to see if there was any books for kids on nuclear weapons. There are none. None anywhere. I had uh, the owner of the Secret Garden Bookstore search for me. There is not one book. I have the, one. Other than one called The Bomb. I have, an, I have a children's book on the comic on, on nuclear <coughs> weapons on my desk. Okay, I will. I need to talk to you then because a lot of the teachers ask for resources that they can have in their classrooms. There is one called The Bomb and it's about the making of the atomic bomb. Um, which is, had, I haven't read the whole thing yet, but it's definitely not, not, um, it doesn't speak to why we need to eliminate nuclear weapons. And I think speaking to kids and is an action that needs to be, we need to talk about nuclear weapons with kids because that's the future. So, um, some very powerful visits this week with students. All the way down to second grade. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. <clears throat> well, I think we need to wrap it up because we're going to have to <laughs> clean up before we leave. So thank you all for coming out tonight on a Friday. Um, I hope you learned something new and go away with an enhanced or a new perspective on nuclear weapons and why we don't need them. We need to get rid of them. Um, I want to thank Mike and Fumi for singing for us. Uh, I want to thank WPSR and JCL, even though I am JCL. I'll, I'll thank myself. No, I, I'll, I'll thank Kyle. Thank Kyle and Sean for um, hosting this. Uh, again, thank you to the JCCCW for letting us use this facility for free. There are still some cookies, and I believe there's a little bit of matsutake gohan left, so feel free to take those. We don't want to have to take it home with us. And thank you, Domorigato gozaimashita, for our speakers, for a great program. And drive safely. Good night.